Hey guys, the Smosh Summer Games Apocalypse Takeover is still going on on the Smoshcast. We're out in the desert, just having a good old time, uh, and let's just get right into it. And don't forget, after the end of the Smosh Summer Games, we're going to be having a very special Smosh Summer Games reunion podcast. We're bringing on a whole bunch of the Smosh Summer Games members. It's going to be a good time, so stay around for that. Oh, and I just want to say really quick, shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Thank you. Well, Lasercorn also cheats. I was the ref for the first summer games, and he came up to me and handed me a 20 to give them a point, like to help their side. As far as Defy Media goes, there was so much stuff behind the scenes with that. It was just, it was not good and it was not fun to the point where I was like so stressed out just to come to work. Dude, the cartwheel into the belly flop was probably the most ballsy thing I've ever done. If you look back on the video, my hands slip three inches to the right before I flop on in there. Like, I could have easily just died. Can you say, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me? Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy that it's actually summer this time. It's actually summer. It's actually summer. <laughs> wow, we're actually shooting summer games before my birth. Wait, my birthday already happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have right. issues with my birthday. Hey, guys. Welcome to episode two of the Summer Games Smoshcast. We are in an amazing month of Summer Games content. You've seen the trailer. You've seen the first competition. You know our teams. And now we're, we're here yet again in this crazy house. Dude. Yeah, this house literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. It looks like, I assume, like, if purgatory exists, this is what it looks like. That uh, sounds awesome. Just, no, I've, I've heard purgatory is not awesome. <laughs> I mean, if it was this, it'd be awesome. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, uh, you know. I, w I was very concerned driving out here that they just took an insurance policy out on all of us, and we were just mm. all going to die out in the desert. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, this is how we make our money back. <laughs> Get rid of them. Yeah, by the way, guys, it is me, Courtney, hosting, but we are today with Wes Johnson and Shane Top, <laughs> a.k.a. looking like a Virgin Mary... If for the people listening, he has like a weird cloak over his head right now. He looks like he's going to birth Christ. Uh, I thought of it more as like a badass post-apocalyptic Jedi, but okay. you had to go with uh, Mother Mary, which is also fine. Post-apocalyptic Virgin Mary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. This house is really cool because behind me is a very, very old TV and a VHS and... Uh, and some VHS tapes. Uh, if I remember correctly, they have Meet the Parents on there. They have Stand By Me. Oh, yeah. They have uh, My Cousin Vinny. They have the Lonesome Dove collection. Oh, they have another old Western one Ooh, They have the Mrs. End Doubtfire. There. Any stack of VHSs Ooh. with Mrs. Doubtfire is a solid stack. They have Happy Gilmore. I saw that. That's classic. Uh, that's not on the that row that you're seeing I see, there. I see that one. I see that one. That's uh, where the Doubtfire is. You, you, on VHS, you know, you are always going to have those classic comedies. You're going to have Happy Gilmore, Meet the Parents... <laughs> Possibly Billy Madison, um, you know, Tommy Boy. Those Fantasia. Are fa Fantasia, Ooh. classic 90s comedies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Wes, is this like your first podcast ever or have you been on other podcasts? I, I, I've done other podcasts for like video games and cosplay oh, and fun. stuff like that. So those have been a lot of fun because, I, you know, I go off on tangents for like two hours and people are just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, probably stop talking now. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, it, this is my first uh, podcast with you guys, so I'm excited. Yeah, Yay. I just feel this is such a cool like place. I was doing my makeup by this mirror, and I didn't realize till about halfway through. I looked down, and there was just like a, a hide of a cat just on the table, That's... like a real one. And I was like, oh, like a house cat? No, it looked like a like an ocelot. But are those real? Are ocelots what? real? Yes. <laughs> okay, that, that's what it was. No, they're just in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, Yo, uh, quick question. Is cheetahs real? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was actually thinking about that. There's some terrifying creatures on the planet Earth that you're just like, no, that's not real. That's in a sci-fi movie. Like giant squids. Oh, yeah. What, uh, well, how yeah. how I'm, did? I'm very glad we're out here in the middle of the desert as far away as possible from squids. I think oh, that was yeah, the I goal is to get as far away <laughs> yeah. from squids it as possible. It is in your contract. Yeah, cannot be near squids. Yeah. No? Also, squids have giant beaks. They mm. have a beak. They are demon creatures. True. It's. I think the thing 
that I liked about past summer games was like that the hotel rooms and our like places where we stayed was super close by because this is like literally so desolate. It's a half hour from like our hotel. Yeah, and our hotel is already out in the middle of nowhere. And then we have to drive another half hour further into nowhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is nothing around here. Yeah. What was your guys' favorite place to stay when we did summer, summer games? I, it's for summer games, mm-hmm. I, I think Wild West for sure. Like that that town was great, and like you said, the hotel was literally right there. It's like, oh, I forgot, you know, my underwear. I can just <laughs> run back and get it, as uh, one does. You yeah, of forget course. Underwear. See, for me, it's summer camp because we had that entire summer camp like the location building, yeah. that rented cool. out. It had so many buildings, and it was such this this huge place, kind of surrounded by hills, mm. kind of out in the middle of nowhere as as well. But uh. But we all had these like rooms we were staying in and with bunk beds, whatever. So it really felt like we were at summer camp for that week. And uh, it was great because we had that giant cafeteria room. And the dog. Yeah. There was that big old wolf dog. Yeah, dude, it was so cool. I think the cool thing, I, I love them both, but I think Bonnie Springs was really awesome. It was kind of weird because there would be tourists like randomly mm-hmm. walking by and you'd be like, oop. Uh, but the the fact that they had that like bar, like restaurant right there that we like got to like walk in a couple nights and just be like, mm, cool. This is uh, yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. It was really weird. And like in the middle, you'd wake up in the middle of, or wake up in the morning and there'd be peacocks kind of walking around. Yeah. <laughs> that was so fun. I'm, I'm kind of bummed the last couple of summer games i just haven't done my own personal vlogs like i usually did those are like my favorite things to do because like the the vlogs that we do on the summer games are only as so they can only get so personal than those other ones like at summer camp like you really saw us like hanging out and stuff and yeah those ones also we had like a little more downtime too like we blew it we obviously didn't even stay together during we blew it because that was in LA, like yeah, we blew it. We didn't have any sort of budget because yeah. Defy, I don't think wanted to do summer games. Yeah, no, we I found a we coupon fought... to Party City, and then that's how we <laughs> paid for. We, we fought blew tooth it. and nail to do summer games last year, yeah. and uh, we literally had no budget. But this year, uh, we you know we want to do this, so we're able to like get together and do it, and it's gonna be. It is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely missed all you guys. So this is a great yeah, experience. Dude. Like in that hangout, we are actually staying with each other again, which is awesome. Yeah, what have you been up yeah. to, man? Uh, you know, I've been working on a channel with my brother. So we've been just kind of making videos, doing that. Uh, I'm going to be an uncle soon. <gasps> uh, so he's he's having a kid. He's having a little he baby is? girl. Yeah, him and his wife are having a little baby girl. I'm not sure what they're going to name her yet. But uh, I'm super excited because, you know, I really want to be a dad someday. So it's like... Yeah, you know, uh, it's like that first little step. It's like you know, I didn't get a dog, but now I get a niece. So you know, <laughs> just, oh, it's you know, so cool. I feel like I'm leaping over a step, but it's gonna be so cool. Like they're gonna be great parents. I'm really excited, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. They live in Vegas now, so I'm gonna be able to like drive down. Oh. And be like, ah. Being an uncle is so fun because you get to go visit and like be there for your nieces or nephew and then you get to be like all right i'm out yeah. you enjoy <laughs> yeah. taking care of all the no, difficult was... stuff i get to just like hang out and be cool and have exactly. fun exactly yeah i have three nephews and a niece and it's so fun you should have them name her weslina i i don't Wesleyna. i don't know if they're gonna go for that they're probably gonna name her something from game of thrones because they're oh. just obsessed well now they know uh. the ending so they don't have to like accidentally name her daenerys or oh something. i don't think there was ever a chance of that <laughs> neither of them liked her like the entirety of the show Whoa. they were just like nah i i know what's going to happen <laughs> she's literally told us like 20 times they watched the show 11 times through before the before the last season came out well Whoa. i'm really excited uh i'm really happy for you to have uh Night King Johnson. <laughs> That's <her niece. laughs> KKJ. That's the initials. K-K-J. Night King Johnson. George R. R. Martin Johnson. Georger. <laughs> 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 uh, so what are you guys looking forward to this year for summer games? That's tough. You know, I am. What I am excited about is that w- I do think there's going to be a little more free time in this one. You know, mm-hmm. we're very focused on we're going to shoot these games, but we're not trying to get a ton of stuff out there. And usually, some like Wild West, for instance, we didn't have any free time. Mm-hmm. We were waking up, and we were filming stuff all day. It was nuts. It was fun, but it was just crazy. Whereas, what I love about summer games is hanging out with you guys and and getting a chance to really for us all to be together. Yeah. And and chill and. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's always a bonding experience. Hold for one second. Let's do a moment of silence to get the sound of the motor. And then we'll... 
We'll just wait for that to pass and then we'll resume. Our farmer is here. Our apocalyptic farmer. Sorry, my my tractor's outside <laughs> and I let it run. I brought oh, the cold He's harvesting mutt fruit. Mm, that tractor's <laughs> been out. running around behind my back. Having other farmers ride it? Mm. I don't like I it very how, much. I hate how mm. shaky you make it sound. Mm. <laughs> and I've got a hood now. Mm. <laughs> to protect me from heat and cold and also the locusts. Because God is angry with me. <laughs> <laughs> Why oh. do you ask? Stop. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this guy onto every podcast I'm on because last time, last time he was an old miner who lived in the woods and, uh, and farmed rare ores and lived in a giant walnut. Now he's a farmer who who thinks his tractor is cheating on him, and God hates him for something he did. Probably but he because won't you're say dressing what. like his mom. Yeah, that's, you know that's accurate. <laughs> Just because I stole your mother's no God. <laughs> Listen, that's all incorrect. <laughs> None of that is correct. Okay, uh, Wes, remember yeah. when I asked uh, what your favorite Summer Games location was? Uh, remember yes, that a few yeah, minutes ago? And you were that. like, Summer Games? And I was like, yeah. And it's, was it because like you love the Winter Games cabin so much? I did. I love the Winter Games yeah, cabin so much. Like That was the first time we all got to actually hang out together and like learn about each other and meet. And that was actually where you and I talked about being roommates. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like it was It was so cool. Like, you know, I it, before that, like we were all like kind of like, oh, hi, in the office and stuff like that. But, you know, um, that was the first time we all got to hang out yeah. and just be like, yeah. hey, Wow, we're all cool people, not just random people in the office, which was which was mm-hmm. really nice. And then we all actually became friends after that because yeah, it felt dude. like we were very disconnected. It's yeah, true. you came in clutch with the roommate hookup because I literally I, something was going on. I I needed to live closer to work. I was still living at my dad's. And I was like, this needs to happen so fast. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't want to live with someone I don't know. And I just like happened to mention it to you. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, I have a room. And it, like the budget was exactly what I needed. And like that. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, that kind of fell into place because I was like trying to find a roommate at the time. I was like, I don't want to live with just anybody, and I was like, you know, knew you were super sweet, and I was just like, that 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 will be perf that would be perfect. So, yeah, because Jovan lived there for a while. Yeah, exactly. That's why I needed a roommate that was super sweet, um, <laughs> like, just like Jovan. <laughs> yeah, that's totally the what sweetest I was getting boy. At. <laughs> what was that like? How long was he there? You know, we lived together. He moved in March of 2013 with me, wow. um, and we lived together. I think when did you move in? Was I think it, it was 2016. So yeah, he he moved out just a few months before you moved wow. in. Wow, so it was a while. So 2013, were you on Smosh Games or were you editing? I was editing. I didn't really Ooh. start coming on to Smosh Games until 2014. That's so crazy. How did that, that used happen? To edit, yeah. Um, so I started off, and we, you know. Uh, so Hinky, Joven, Lazy Corn, and I, and um, a few other people worked together at this place called Mahalo, which we, we made video game walkthrough videos, and we were a bunch of idiots. So jump forward in the future, I started working like production uh, for a motion capture company. They went bankrupt, and so I started working for a video game charity company, and then they like were like, All right, we need to like take a break so our website actually works because they did a bunch of charity campaigns and the website just didn't function. Oh. So like they were like, uh, go find famous donors who are willing to donate till we actually hit our campaign goals because our website literally doesn't function. And I was like, oh God. So then I started messaging uh, Joven Sohinky and Lazycorn because they were all like, hey, we need editors. I'm like, yeah, I can edit. I can do a thing. And they were oh. like, yeah, come on in. So I t- uh, tested it out with one of the videos with Ian and Anthony playing Game Time, and they were like, oh, yeah, we like your style. Cool. You're hired. I'm like, sweet. This is great. Yay. Uh, and then I edited from, I, th- I think it was October 2012, all, like, in- until 2014. And I, they started, <laughs> there was a crazy part of my schedule where they brought me on as talent, but I was still being paid as an editor, Ooh. and I worked both full-time jobs. So I was full-time talent and full-time editor. So there were days where if we were shooting, I would get there at my normal editing time, edit for maybe 45 minutes, go in, set up all of the game consoles, <laughs> all of the capture, all of the audio, make sure all that was good to go because that was also a part of my job. So I was an editor. I was also Tim. <laughs> Uh, and then I was talent, so then we would shoot until 6 p.m., and I'd have to go back and do a full day of editing. So I'd leave at 4 in the morning. 
What? Like, and I would just, and I would have to come back in at nine. So I was like exhausted and to the point where I started getting nauseous whenever I opened premiere and I had to go to Matt and I was just like, look, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm literally dying. That's so you're saying for well over a year, you were going off two hours of sleep at night? At night so that was only on shoot days. Okay. Yeah. So like then the days we had the big bulk shoots, those, those days I was like so stressed out because I'm like, I also have videos to edit. So it was like a chaotic, really crazy time. Man. Of, I had no idea that it was like that. It, it was very tough for a while, and I, I you know, I kind of leaned on Matt, and I was like, look, man, I, like, I need to do X, Y, or Z. I can't do all three mm. of them. Um, and so, you know, eventually they brought Tim on, and eventually I was taken off of editing to just do the like, Smosh Games talent the whole time. For, but for a little while, I think it was maybe four or five months, where it was just, it was so stressful on my body. I was, like, getting so sick. Wow. It was It was rough. That sounds wild, Dang. dude. It was tough, but you know, it, it was worth it in the end. I got to, you know, make cool videos yeah. with you guys and, you know, oh, goof yeah. around and be a complete idiot. So So you've been through two company bankruptcies then? Three, technically, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, Mahalo, that went bankrupt and they had to like lay off all their employees. And then I worked at this place called Digital Domain and they went bankrupt because they like defaulted on a two hundred million dollar loan or whatever it was. Uh, and then you had to fi. Oh my so god. it was like I'm like oh god, <laughs> PTSD yeah, just kicking in. You're cursed. Yeah, I, look, <laughs> oh, no, hey, look, it is of not curses. me. Speaking, it's speaking not of me. speaking of which, did you have you won a summer games? Yeah, didn't. Yeah, wasn't I won, your curse you won Wild West. I won Wild West. You, yeah, the curse, the was, curse broken. was broken. Uh, they partnered Lasercorn and I up, and apparently his uh, winning streak won out. So he still hasn't lost. Still hasn't lost. So We're he's taking the... him down this year. I know he's got to go down, hey. man. Oh, I don't think so. The guys. problem is we have Joven on our team, and Joven being on a team is, yeah, is rough. I don't know. Lasercorn seems to be the the good luck charm. And, and well, Lasercorn also cheats. It is well known. He doesn't even hide it. He the guy not. literally. Okay, and you don't want to know. You want to know how I know this? I was the ref for the first summer games, and oh, it was no, my first dude. day of shooting. And he came up to me and handed me a twenty to give them a point, like to help <laughs> their side. So I'm like, oh, so you're blatantly cheating. And we're gonna take a quick break, guys. Today uh, we we got a sponsor. The Smoshcast is brought to you by Skillshare. As you guys know, I'm kind of a dummy when it comes to some things. I don't even know how to fix a, a button or sew a hole in a, in a shirt. And that's where Skillshare can actually come in handy for me. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. So not just hand skills, but also photography, creative writing, design. They got all sorts of stuff on there. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for our listeners. You could get two months of Skillshare Share for free. So to sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Smosh. Again, that's Skillshare.com slash Smosh to start your two freaking free months right now. That's Skillshare.com slash Smosh. I could use that code too, right? I'm going to use that code. And now back to some dumb dumbs. Dude, that's so crazy. You were a you were the first ref. Of I the was Smosh I games. was the first. Wow, I didn't think about that. I am technically the best ref. Because you were the first. Because I was the problems? first ref. I was the first summer games ref. Let it be known. Dude, Matt Rob has a tattoo on his arm that says best ref. I know. You God. should get first ref. First Which ref. First is the worst. Second is the best. Uh oh. See, oh. you were you were too good of a ref. They had to upgrade you to competitor. It's really true. And just be like, Very they, they had to take you out of the best ref competition because they knew you were gonna win. Yeah, that was my first week. Yeah, dude. <laughs> at Smosh. Yeah. Like it was right into it. Some of the facial reactions you gave to just the nonsense going on were just. <laughs> and you know, priceless. you know what I also think happened? I think I showed up. They were like, "Yeah, you're not in summer games." I showed up on the day, and they were like. And I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm just watching. Like, I'm just hanging out. And then they're like, you want to be the ref? And I was just like, all right. And they're like, all right, you're going to intro this game. And I was just like, duh. You did it. And I had never done anything personality-based. Like, I had been an actor, but I'd never I'd never just been myself on camera. So that I had to just go into Wait, it. Wait, so you did personality stuff before sketch stuff? N uh, yeah, I did summer games before anything. So, so, you, so you, wow, that's crazy. Cause like, so Olivia, Keith, and Noah were doing sketch for the longest time, and then went into personality. You technically went, did personality, I went personality first. first. Wow. Face first. Face first. Skills first later. That's, what, that's as crazy. They say. My sister told me her like 
this moment that makes her laugh hysterically is like the first moment that you're ever seen in Smosh Summer Games is when you walk out and you just hold up the trophy and it, yeah. like that it cuts like way too quick <laughs> and you don't see the trophy. <laughs> I don't know why she thought that was it's, funny. Yeah. I guess it is because I'm laughing. Dude. That was a lot of fun. And then I ended up having to eat my first habanero experience. Yeah. Mm. Was that, that yours too? Yeah, that was my first habanero <sighs> because, experience too. <sighs> wish I'd have known then how much of a thing that was going to become. Actually, I don't think I had to eat a habanero. Oh my God. You didn't at all that time? I, the, I don't remember. I don't think I had to. For some reason, I was like, oh, thank God I didn't have to do that. Oh. Uh, but that was also one of my saddest uh, competitions ever was the uh, the the Slurpee because I didn't <gasps> oh, get to participate. Yeah. I was like, you physically <laughs> can't get a brain freeze. And I think that's Olivia like helped win that. Or was it Noah who like really took one for the team on that one? Olivia was dying. I yeah, remember Olivia her face couldn't get, was she just... couldn't get through her slurp. But I think I think Olivia won MVP that year. She won MVP another year. Olivia has the most MVPs. Really? I mm-hmm. know. We need to get stats. Oh, there's a Twitter account that has done oh, statistics yeah. on the games. It's true. We do need to find that. Yeah, we should. That, that's so cool. Like I never realized how much work goes into that stuff. Have you guys? What trophies have you guys gotten? I don't think I've ever gotten You haven't one. gotten a trophy? Have you oh, gotten, I've gotten you've the gotten... biggest fail several times. <laughs> <laughs> it's, because you, you, it's because you always go for the risks. Because I, I remember you got a big fail. Did you get biggest fail for summer camp with your belly flop? Where you just, you tried to do a front flip and you landed on your back? Yeah, I'm sure I did. <laughs> uh, like, I had to. I was like, you know what? I got to do a flip. I got to try and do something. And then I, like, completely forgot that I don't have the athletic ability to actually do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> like... And then, uh, of course, your rap, which I don't think yeah. you won. You didn't win Biggest Fail for that. I think I Joven. I had to have. I thought Joven won for his sorry. Like, he was oh, trying to, yeah, we were doing the did. gun duels, and his guns kept not working. I think, did I just get LVP for, for doing the I don't think you got rap? LVP. I've gotten that before, and you I have? was, was kind of like, I beg your pardon. <laughs> How dare you? Which one? I don't. I, you know, I don't remember. It might have been Suburb Camp, but it also might have been Wild West. I've only gotten. Uh, I got uh, most epic moment for Wild West, which is when we were playing Hangman in real life. Oh yeah. And a five letter word and followed by a four letter word is put up there, and they're all Wild West themed, right? Mm-hmm. And it gets put up there, <laughs> and I'm looking at it and. My team starts to, the cow bays start trying to figure out what it is. And I turn to him and I go, guys, it's Wyatt Earp. How did you get that? <laughs> I think, so I think the reason I mainly got it is because I knew at the time Joe Beretta was one of the refs. He was in charge of like coming up with the words and stuff. I'm like, I know Joe Beretta well enough that he would make Wyatt Earp one of the words. I could see him being like, he loves Wyatt Earp and whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, what other Western themed thing is that? I'm like... Let's just go for it. And I guessed Wyatt Earp without having guessed a letter. And uh, that was correct. So I was, uh, it was a risk. But that's the thing. You got to take those risks. You got to take those risks. Gotta take you got to attempt the wraps. You got to attempt the front flips. Dude, you know? the cartwheel into the belly flop was probably the most ballsy thing I've ever done on that was really summer cool. games. I, if you look back on the video, my hands slip. Like three inches to the right before I flop on in Dang. there. And I had never practiced it. I was just like, I'm a, that sounds, that feels like in my work physically and scientific. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I could have easily just died. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that would have been really bad. Also, my pun was awful. My, I what was sang. your pun? Well, I, I made a on-the-fly pun. I was like, oh, I hope this thing isn't gone with the wind because they said hold for the wind for sound. And I was like, oh, gone with the wind. But then I just proceeded to sing and I will always love you. Oh, I wonder. Oh, man. Now that you brought it up, the internet gods are going to go demonetize that. Is it demonetized? Part. you know? Your part's going to get cut now. Hey. No. Yeah. Well... Probably for the best. <laughs> mine, mine sucked that year. Uh, my pun, I can't remember what it was, but I, the one I'm proud of is still. Uh, I think it's camp where I used all the refs' last names as yep. puns. That was pretty baller. I remember that. That was that was the moment I was like, oh damn it! Like that was that's so good, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Dude, I was practicing that song like for weeks. Really? The the, the song that I sang. Yeah, I well, was I, practicing. I, I was... See, see, Wes came up with this rap like right there. 
Yeah, you, uh, you came up to me and you're like, okay, I think I got this idea. Props to you, dude. Did you come up with it that morning? I yeah, I can't remember exactly when. I was just like, I'm just gonna write a bunch of crap down. If this fails, it'll be funny, and which you know, I, I'm like the pastiest person ever. So yeah, it's gonna fail. Uh, <laughs> but I'm like, it'll be hilarious regardless. If I succeeded at it, I walked in no full well knowing that if I succeeded at it, everyone was gonna be like, okay, cool. It, yeah, like, no, it, it went perfectly for. for I the don't know content. if there was a solid beat and you went in like the way you had it in your head, I would have been like, oh, crap. I'm of the opinion <laughs> that in summer games, a fail is always more entertaining than a win. True. I always. I they're, they're always the moments that I remember. I don't yeah. remember when people did awesome things. I remember when dumb shit happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. Because we're all a bunch of goofballs. Like, we all know that we're very, like, the majority of people here are, like, extremely talented people. You know, there's, like, that one right. person mm-hmm. that's not, but uh, we won't name yeah, them. Yeah, Shane. Oh, what? Uh, okay, uh, oh, sorry. wow. Sorry. Uh, what? You just went ahead and said it. Okay. Sorry. But yeah, so it's like, it's we, we expect each other to do these great, awesome things. We don't expect each other to, like, mess mm-hmm. up most of the time. Uh, so it's like those are the moments that we really remember because those are the ones that are uh, the most endearing. Very true. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess ahead of time. I'm gonna guess that maybe Noah's gonna get MVP. I don't know. I think he's just gonna pull through. Noah's gonna do some awesome stuff. His wits, his inner strength, his spirit will come through. And I'm saying this. He's on the opposite team as me. So I'm just saying. I think that might happen. LVP. I, I really wanted to go to corn. You think laser corn could, That'd be crazy. has laser corn ever gotten LVP? I don't think so. Man. I don't think so. I think he's got an MVP. I mean, he's won. Like, I think Joven's gotten it twice. Joven's LVP? got an LVP yeah. like twice. And there was that whole thing LVP to MVP and like oh, that didn't yeah, happen. Oh yeah, no. And then he nearly got LVP again because <laughs> like he was doing so well up until the very end. It was like the relay or something, and he just uh, completely he just, dumped it. Man, Joven sometimes, and he's on my team. <laughs> he's on our team. Uh, yeah, he's, he's on, on our team. Our team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope Lasercorn gets LVP. That'd be great. I, yes. That'd be crazy. It would be great. Uh, and you know what? It's crazy. At summer camp, I, I remember my team completely dominating. And then Joven just completely duffed That's it. right. The, the final relay, you guys were so far ahead. You had a 10-second lead. They, they gave you a 10-second yeah, head Yeah, we started start. off a 10-second lead. And oh, no, no. The other team had a 10-second lead. You guys, I think you guys had a 10-second lead or something. I definitely don't think we did because we were losing, and then okay. you guys were far ahead, but because of Joven, and that's the, I think we were able to, I think. Isn't Joven on our team? And that's why. I, I, I know I know for sure that the it's winter games at the ice skating together. rink, Because I was harsh really mellows. Up. I was harsh mellows. I think Joven was kumbayas. Okay, yeah. So I was Kumbaya. Yeah. I was Kumbaya. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I remember yeah, it was there's a been several where at the last minute in the last relay like yeah. we win like most of the competitions all that sort of stuff and then in the relay Joven just like completely <laughs> screws up yeah. and I just happen to be on his team all those times oh. and I'm just God. like I hate the world. I yeah. just want one. I yeah, just want dude. One. <laughs> I I seen on Twitter fans being kind of upset that like Keith or I haven't gotten an MVP or a most epic moment mm. or something. It's interesting. Like, th- there's like a buildup of like the stats and like h- how things have come so far. Yeah, it's, yeah. Re- it's really cool that everyone's like keeping track of the stuff and then are so invested mm-hmm. uh, and this, that they're just like you know they're rooting for their specific people, but then they, they've really rallied behind some of these teams because they love the combinations between yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. And we've tried as best as we can with this social media blackout. Up right. till everything comes to, you know. Yeah, I, I think I can say this. We're you know we're, we're recording this before this is all hopefully released, mm-hmm. whatever. So I'm hoping none of us Messed fail. Up. Yeah. And and spill the beans. Yeah, cause I mean, if you will. That was such a cool moment when we shared the Wild West trailer. It was. It really that was, was. That's okay, cause like VidCon is awesome, and. Like, when you get to have something special like that to share, other than, like, just doing a and a like, that's the coolest thing. Because I feel like Q&As are just, like, a bare minimum of what, what you can do there, there. And it's, like, that was the coolest experience, like, getting that instant reaction. People, and we're gonna, people lost we're their minds. This year. Yeah. People's heads exploded. Yeah. They weren't sure. What, like, when the paramedics arrived, they're like, what happened here? <laughs> we were like, we showed them the Wild West trailer, and they're like, what's that? And we showed it to them, and their heads exploded. And more paramedics had to show up for those paramedics. Guys, this is what you're dealing with. The best content on the internet. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and that's why my tractor is cheating on me with all the boys in the town. What? 
<laughs> My tractor done had sex with everybody. That's right. I have this question here. All right. What's, uh, what is it? What are the... Cha- what's up? You wave your, you wave your hand? Dude, Ryan Finnerty's wearing yellow Crocs right now. I know. It's pretty I'm distracting. Thriving. Our producer uh, and our, the Smosh writer, Ryan Finnerty, uh, he's wearing yellow Crocs. He's lovely. He hates this. He hates that we're calling him out, but he's wearing bright yellow Crocs. My, my soul he feels good about it. He just said he feels good about no, it. No, I was just stretching. And then Kevin forgot the, his normal headphones, so he's wearing gamer headphones right now <laughs> as he's trying to hear and make sure we sound good. <laughs> They're way more comfortable. Yeah. I'll say that. It's the, it's the difficulties of shooting a podcast off-site. Speaking of difficulties and challenges, the question was, what are the challenges of shooting something like this compared to other stuff we shoot? Ooh. I mean, being off site and like being somewhere else is so cool because it's like a change of scenery, but it's also like another obstacle. Like I need to make sure I have everything I need. I packed eight pairs of underwear. Uh, No, I think it was six because I'm here for three days. So I packed two pairs of underwear a day in case I mess myself every day, (laughs) which is going to happen because, you know, you get so excited. Like. You know, I mean, think about the past years. Like, there's been, like, ice cream bum day. Yeah. It's true. You don't even you have know? to poop yourself. The Dude, mess you will get, come. We get yeah. so messed up, man. Well, I also just figured sweating and whatever. And I mean, so. it's supposed to get up to, like, what, 110 degrees while we're here? Something like that. It can. I think this week we're lucky. It'll be, like, only 105. Oh. oh only kind oh of an oven. Nice. Ooh, <laughs> put on a parka. <laughs> it's going to be real cold. Uh-oh. You want to build an igloo? <laughs> Look, guys, it's only I 105 to... out. Snow day. <laughs> I needed to lose a couple of pounds. I could use to lose that water weight. <laughs> lose the water weight. Yeah, I think it's just like generally for these summer games, it has been heat though. Because mm-hmm. we're outside all day doing crazy competitions and it's hot and it just gets to you after a while. You don't realize until it's the end of the day and you're like, I am exhausted. Yeah, I love the heat, but. When, when you have to, like, focus and be, like, kind of on, it's, like, a lot. It's harder mm-hmm. to enjoy, yeah. for sure. I used to be so used to heat, man. Growing up in Arizona, I I could handle 115-degree weather. Uh, and then I, I've, lost, I've lost my powers over You've the gone years. soft. Gone to L.A. where the weather's just always 75, mm-hmm. always. See, on the opposite end of that, like, I went back to Ohio to visit for Thanksgiving, and I was like, what is what is this weather? Why is it why ice? No, this is supposed to be inside of a freezer, and that is it. Oh like, no! Like get out of here. Why is the air minty? Yeah. <laughs> that's called that's called cold. Yeah. Oh, it, it was uh, it was it was not a fun experience. I could do that for like four days, and I'm like, no, back to California. Mm. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-mm. Yeah, dude. I like snow. I mean, the winter games, that was the thing. That was tough with winter games, too. Anytime we had to do, like, stuff that was outside, it was so freezing. Mm-hmm. Remember we did the snow angels after being in the jacuzzi? Well, because we're also just in our oh, swimsuits. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a little different. You mean the time Noah almost died? He did almost. He did start to show signs of uh, hypothermia. And that oh. was just from the dance. He didn't even get in the snow. I know. He didn't yeah. even get in the snow. I, had to, I went in his place, I think. It was I you also, or Joe? Joe went in his place. That's right. I also just served such cool dance moves that he was almost freezing it up because they were so cool. Get out. Get out, Courtney. Ryan Finnerty is wearing yellow Crocs, and you are somehow the least cool person in this room. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, so do you, do you miss um, Smosh every day, or has it been nice taking the break? You know, I, I, I will say I miss, I miss you guys, for sure. I miss you guys, and I miss being in videos with you guys. I definitely don't miss, like, the stress of Defy Media yeah. at, at all. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, I, I loved being a part of Smosh Games. I love doing stuff with you guys. I love being, you know, doing the stuff with Smosh Second and, you know, being a part of the, the whole family because it is a family. But as far as Defy Media goes, there was so much stuff behind the scenes with that, which was just, and, and I haven't really talked about it at all, but mm-hmm. it was just, it was not good and it was not fun to the point where I was like so stressed out just to come to work. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is, you know, and in, in back in my head, I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm getting to like, you know, play video games and be in videos with my friends. But at the same time, it was just the there was so much going on behind the scenes that a lot of people didn't see, uh, especially on camera, because you know we we have yeah. fun, we have fun together. Yeah, like, we and only so show so cam- much. Yeah, we we only so, show so much, and we only um, you know are la- we're allowed to show so much uh, of ourselves. And it was like very very stressful to that point dealing with a lot of the 
like the chaos and yeah. things and uncertainty. But so when when it did finally fall, there was actually this feeling of relief. Like there was this feeling of sadness as well because it was like I don't get to see you guys every day anymore. But it was like I don't have to deal with that stress anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, which was cool. So now you know I'm getting to do stuff with my brother, and like I said, he's you know having a little one, so we're making fun videos together. I'm actually working on a big charity video right now. I'm going to be trying to raise a million dollars for St. Jude Children's wow. Hospital. So I'm getting a ton of people involved in that, um, and I've uh, managed to come up with a with a, a sizable budget to make this some really cool content. So it's stuff that I've wanted to do like kind of my whole life. Wow! And I'm finally getting a chance to do it, and I've been writing a lot more. So it's been a lot of fun. Very what cool. games are you mainly playing? You know, I've been so busy, I haven't been playing too much, but I got back into Borderlands 2 again. Cool. They just released DLC for it uh, in anticipation of Borderlands 3. So, like, Borderlands 2 came out, like, I, I like 10 years ago, 12 wow. years ago, and they're just like, boom, here's some cool DLC, go play it. And we're all, everyone's just like, yeah, I love that game. It's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, of course I'm going to download That's Borderlands awesome. 2 and go nice. play it again. Nice. That's me. I can't wait till Skyrim, the new game comes out, the new Elder Scrolls. Um, you said you've been writing more. Like, what are you writing? I know you had that Star Wars, like, type thing that you were writing a while back. I don't know if I'm allowed to. No, that. you're fine. So, I, yeah, I, I'm, I, I love writing, and I love coming up with stuff and, like, building my own world. So, so I So, like, lo- uh, so, like, just fiction or yeah, fantasy? Yeah, it, it's mostly or? fiction, fantasy, things like that. You know, I just came up, like, and I, I just come up with a ton of ideas, and then I'll meet with, you know, various people, like, writing partners who can actually, like kind of contain the chaos that goes on in my brain and also type because I like poke type. I'm <laughs> not a fast typer at all. I you did don't not do that learn. Mavis Beacon? I did not do the Mavis Beacon. Uh, you know, Mario teaches typing was not a thing on my computer. Otherwise, I probably would be much better at typing. But um, yeah, so I poke at the keyboard. I type very slow and to the point where it often frustrates the people that I'm working with to be like, no, give me the damn laptop and just tell me what to write. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, glad we're on the same page with this. But yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, my, my cousin is the editor of Supernatural. So I'm actually, uh, cool. I've been talking Whoa. to him and writing writing a, a potential spinoff because um, the show's ending. Like, it's 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 ending. It's over. Like, they're, they're going into their last season. So I'm like, just writing that is a fun pitch because I'm like, I like the universe and I like the world. It'll be fun. That's uh, awesome. So that's kind of cool. And I just I just love coming up with ideas and stories. So e- even awesome. if it's just for me, I like the creative process of writing. Oh, totally. I, f- I feel like I used to, I used to like writing fiction stuff too. But, like, something has happened over the last few, year, few years. I've just totally lost that ability to create that world in my head. Mm -hmm. And it's so cool because, like, when you go back and read it, you, like, see it all again. It's really fun. But, like, I don't know. Like, writing sketch comedy has gotten, like, pulled me out of it kind of. It's, like, such a different format in terms of, like, mapping out what's happening in this world and and stuff like that. So, yeah, I feel like I definitely have to work that muscle again if I want to get back into it. Yeah, it was something that I lost for a long time because, like, there was a lot going on with work and you know we were very very busy people all the time coming up with ideas for that and then when I got to finally take a break I like kind of sat back and it was like I had like you know like three days where I was like I didn't do much I was just like resting and then I was like ooh, I really like that idea so it was like really cool to see how like not having that stress anymore really sparked that creativity again and I was like and I ended up writing like 35 pages for this thing. And I was like, whoa, uh, uh, okay, cool. Like, huh. like that that hit me. And it's always at four in the morning. You're like yeah. lay down to go to sleep. And you're like, no, but how about this? And then you get up and you write until like 8 a.m. And you're just, your body's just like, hey, you know, it's probably time for sleep now. And you're like, no, just two more pages. Do you talk to your body like that? I mean, I, it, it, okay, my, my, <laughs> body, my body yells at me a lot. And I'm like, no, f*** you, ice cream. Um, so... Wes, I need water. <laughs> no. We have a pup. We must write more pages. <laughs> uh, Shane's a total bookworm. You should maybe give him some of your stuff to read. Yeah, you want to read, write some, you write some books stuff? for me to read. Do you yeah. write, Shane? Like, fiction outside of script stuff? Sure. I haven't in a, in a while. Uh, I used to more. Uh, just for fun, I would write short stories, whatever. I think it's therapeutic and and good and just fun uh it's also an exercise for me with my perfectionism because writing is always you're never gonna like what you Mm -hmm. write in fact i i haven't in so long because the second i write a page i literally just hate it and i'm like oh i'm the worst and so it's tough it's really tough for me but yeah I, i have a lot of ideas that i i would love to just honestly because I think about how cool it would be if I found out I had a great grandfather who wrote a bunch of short stories or something. Like reading that would be cool. Like that's that's my motivation. Yeah, but I obviously write a lot of sketches and whatnot, so that's really fun. Uh, yeah. Like Damien and I 
wrote this weird <laughs> sketch recently. Yeah, that's um, a crazy one. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit down. Like, I, I love that because I'm like, it's, it feels so free. Like with sketches, I know I can write anything. I could literally, I mean, I look, guys, after this, I might go write a sketch about a farmer whose tractor is cheating on him. <laughs> and there is a chance that we could make it. No. Uh-oh. Uh, well, uh, let me r- remind you <laughs> that there was a sketch called Tinder for Hot Dogs <laughs> that everyone scoffed at, and we got made. And it was clearly everyone's favorite sketch. So don't hate. Look, I'm not saying I'm going to, but if you diss my horny tractor sketch, <laughs> it's going to get petitions online. Look, oh, I'm not trying to do it, but I'm saying, guys, if you want a horny tractor sketch. For the people listening and watching, he's manipulating you. Do not, no, do I'm not. not. I'm, I'm do not saying, petition. I am not manipulating you. Farmer. I'm not saying you need to do anything. I'm just saying that if you guys <laughs> clamor enough for a horny tractor sketch, it'll get made. I'm just saying. Vinnerty uh, is like, oh, God, yeah, what's no, he it's, doing? It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. There's going to be a poll on Twitter. Like, should you make this? It's going to be like 9 million votes. Uh, yes. And there's going to be like four people, including Courtney, who's like, no, yeah. please, God, no. Yeah. Now, I'm imagining as a jealous tractor, it's like I'm like a really creepy horror trailer, but it's just a tractor sitting outside the door and he walks out like after sleeping with a girl and he's just like, oh, oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry. No, the tractor's that's cheating actually, on him. What's oh, funny okay. is that's that's pretty close to Stephen King's Christine, which is uh, about a car that that gets jealous of its uh, the guy driving it. Uh, he gets jealous oh of and starts killing people that he's hanging out with. That's cool. I, I okay, h- hold on, quick idea. Since we're yeah. talking about writing, oh, no. uh, I'm gonna pitch this. I Do think it. they could make remake Christine now, but it's a Tesla. It's with oh, an advanced that's AI. Great. Boom. Black Mirror. Million dollars. Give me a million dollars. Black Mirror, get on it. Black Mirror. Well, you just told it on the podcast, so no one's giving They're you. Just gonna sh- feel it. Yeah, it's also Stephen King's idea. He can have it. Did you guys watch <laughs> Black Mirror? I did. did. I've only you? seen two. It's, I, it's a bummer. You haven't seen the newest season? Uh, so th- I watched two of the two episodes of the newest thing, uh, season. I saw the video game one, which was like crazy. Uh, and I, what was the first one about again? I Striking can't... Vipers? Striking yeah, Vipers. So I saw Striking Vipers. Just shut and... up and kiss me, man. Yeah, it was, <laughs> best line. It was just like, nah. <laughs> uh, I thought that was great. What was the first episode? That The first one was the video game banging. The second one... <laughs> was uh, <laughs> the hostage situation the, and the yeah, third one was, was the Miley Cyrus one. Oh, mm-hmm. that one I saw. That That's... one was great. I feel like this you season You liked was... the Miley Cyrus one. I did, actually. Everyone, you, everyone including myself, doesn't like it. I didn't that's hate fine. it, but, but I that's, was like... That's great. I like to hear that people liked it. I, I mean... I, I, well, it was the fir- one of the first Black Mirror episodes that I've like watched, um, and I was like... I mean, also, hey, I was like, hey, Miley Cyrus, you're doing things again, right? I, yeah. I hadn't heard a thing about her in forever, so, uh, I mean, clearly there wasn't any drama, but it was such a cool view into what I feel like Miley Cyrus's real life was like. That's mm. that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much. It was like, it's slightly set in the future, so there's obviously the, the, all this cool tech because it's Black Mirror, but also it was just like, I feel like a lot of this was just true about Miley Cyrus's life. That's yeah, actually, she really that's, is being used as a... Yeah. That's a exactly. super interesting POV because, yeah, in it, she's an object. She's a product mm-hmm. that is being sold to people, and she has no control over it. So that is a really interesting take on it that I didn't have. I just feel like this whole season was very, like, vanilla compared to everything else. Like, it almost like they went from rated R to PG, PG-13. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, Wes, you said you haven't seen many others, or? Not many. So I saw, like, the robot dog nonsense, and oh. I saw uh, the, the social media thing where if, like, you get banned, no one can oh, really see you. And I was like, okay. oh, my God, this is. You should watch an entire history of you. That's from a couple seasons back. That's the one where you, people have devices in their eyes okay. where they can replay anything they've seen. Wow. So you can re, you can uh, rewind on your own life and watch stuff again. And it's so, it's so good. Oh it's my pretty God. wild. 
Yeah, love Black Mirror. It's one of my favorite shows. There's been so much coming out that I haven't really had the time to go back and watch all the Black Mirror stuff, but it's it's a cool show. Yeah, I remember I really when like there it. was like, man, there's nothing to watch on Netflix. Now there's too much. There's mm-hmm. so much to watch now on every platform. There's too much stuff. <laughs> I li- I've been complaining about this uh, to Damien a lot in these past couple months that I'm like, I end up not doing anything because there's a million shows, a million video games, so much music, so much, it's cool, but there's so much that anytime I pick something, I feel like I, there's something better mm-hmm. that I should be watching. Oh, I, sh- I shouldn't waste my time on this show. There's a better show out there. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. It's there's tough. too much stuff. <laughs> too much stuff. What else do we got here? I mean, we, I, living with you was pretty cool, I will say. Yeah? That was my first roommate experience, and it, like, I mean, I feel like, I want to hear how, how it was from your perspective, how I mean, living with me. You you were super, super chill. I just feel bad. There was a lot of, like, chaos that happened <laughs> with my relationship at the time. So it was, oh, like, yeah. it was like I, I feel bad. And I felt so bad about that because there were definitely a few times where it was, like, like you know, there would be, like, either yelling or whatever drama. was going on. Drama. I never heard you guys fighting. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know you guys, like, did that. Yeah. No. It, well, it wasn't something that I was used to at all because I'd always been, like, it always mm. been very calm stuff before. But I was I was I always felt super bad whenever that sort of stuff were happening for you because I didn't know. But I do remember something really positive though, <laughs> is that I would be walking past your room and I'd hear you singing. I'm like, holy sh! You're so good. You're such, you have such a pretty voice. Like that's awesome. And it actually inspired me to get back and start singing again. So I've like started taking some singing lessons again. It's been really fun. Uh, I missed it a lot. So I didn't know that. Yeah, I I love singing. I've been, I've been singing my whole life. So it was like yeah. I was like, yeah, I miss singing. Like. She's great. I want to start doing this again too. So that was it was really really nice. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, you did. Guys are, I did. You guys are so productive. You guys like writing, singing, all this stuff. I'm at home. I'm like, I can't even watch Netflix. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even watch TV. I mean, I'm not good at that. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I like I I talk about all this productive stuff, but when I get home, I'm just like. Just like three games of League of Legends, like, oh, yeah. okay, there, I'm just going to do that and just chill yeah. for a little bit. I'm surprised, Courtney, that you don't have any crazy, crazy stories with Wes, because Wes, I heard a story about Wes forever ago that is one of my favorite stories, that Uh-oh. you uh, you heard that you guys, something about like you were going to go get a milkshake or like milkshakes were being delivered to your house and you got so excited, you pumped your, <laughs> your hands up into the air and punched holes into the ceiling. Wasn't that, was where was that at? That was like at the five, wasn't that, it? No, that was at, that was at the apartment. Um, and uh, I was living with Joven at the time. And the ceiling right in the entranceway is very short. So I put my hands in the air. I didn't punch holes in the ceilings, but I definitely like made debris fall from the <laughs> <laughs> like It's that crappy popcorn ceiling. So much power. So I, cheese ceiling. Yeah, I brought my hands down and they're just like covered in stuff. And like you just hear this like, Pitter patter on the tile floor, of, like the I piece made, of the ceiling falling I, down. Like, oh, whoops. I just, I just love the idea of like you getting excited. You put, you punch through the ceiling. You grab the ankles of the of the <laughs> resident of the ceiling of the apartment above you, you yeah. and drag them down <laughs> into your. They're just like freaking out, like ah! It's like ice cream. Like what's happening? <laughs> um, give them a big hug. Yeah, I, I. <laughs> This segues perfectly into a theory that I have discussed before on Smosh Pit that I am 100% positive that Wes is a malfunctioning (laughs) Terminator Mm -hmm. sent from the future, a full-on robot designed to destroy all humans. Uh, Something, some, something went haywire with his, with his, you know, his data. And uh, now he likes video games and ice cream. So he's our modern Iron Giant. Uh, he, Wes is the Iron Giant. Yay. Look, I'll take it. I will absolutely <laughs> take that. I love Iron Giant. That movie's so it good. Really is. It holds up. That's so good. My favorite part in that movie is, uh, what? do you remember the part when they go swimming in the lake and then and the then Iron Giant comes in? He goes in <laughs> and then the guy, what's his name, who wears the turtleneck, he's, yeah. in, the, he's in that chair and he gets he gets splashed and floated all the way to the street and he's sitting there and then a, a farmer in a truck comes out and goes, hey! He goes, yeah! You're right in the middle of the... Yeah! <laughs> all right! Um, and then just drives off. That, that guy uh, also has the scene where they're at the diner and a squirrel somehow ends up in his pants. Yeah. And he stands up and he just goes, I'd like to apologize for this and unzips <laughs> and the squirrel flies out. Yo. I, as a kid, died. I was like, that is... Guys, that's the funniest joke ever told. <laughs> I feel like I remember as a kid thinking that he was hot. 
He is hot. That's uh, who is that that plays that? That's um, God, Billy Bob Thornton, right? I'm pretty sure that's Billy uh, Bob. I can't Thornton. remember what Billy Bob Thornton looks like. That's well, he doesn't look necessarily. I mean, he's kind of got a Billy Bob Thornton look. He's got the little uh, goatee, go the okay. soul patch thing. But uh, yeah, that character's great. Uh, Iron Giant, solid. Yeah. I wonder if that's on VHS here. Yeah, maybe they have it. Maybe we we'll watch after. Uh, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Uh, no, sadly. but they have Father of the Bride. Yeah, we got to be careful, though. If, if Wes bonks his head or something during summer games, he might malfunction and try and kill us all. You go into yeah. self-defense mode. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very uh, I'm very scared that like someday somebody's going to say one like trigger word. And the just word. Like, ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> Run away from me. <laughs> it's no, ice cream's the weakness. Away. As long as we keep him filled with ice cream, he's... Docile. Yeah, I'm That's keeping right. that part of my body completely frozen yeah. so that it doesn't activate again. That's why I love ice cream and stuff so much. It's just like, <laughs> gotta keep it cold. Nice. Otherwise, if it heats Other up too much. Laser beams get like, hot. you know, 110 degree weather. Uh-oh. Good thing it's only 105. <laughs> <laughs> it's chilly, frankly. Um, but yeah, the loudest thing that I ever heard in, in the apartment was your Twitch streams. Oh, yeah, no, I was an asshole with those. No, for sure. it wasn't asshole at all. First of all, I lived in a very crowded house all my life. So, like, noise, any kind of noise, like, even my neighbors thumping or whatever, I'm like, cool, people. So, it's, it was never a problem. I just remember one night you were streaming, and then to, like, make things interesting, you were doing a Donald Duck voice. Oh, and, like, I just slowly started losing my shit, just laughing so hard. <laughs> Can you do it just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. What do you want me to say? Um, uh, welcome to Smash Summer Games. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> he would do it just more and more. <laughs> uh, I was just in my bathroom, like laughing maniacally. Yeah, so I really, uh, I love doing voices. That Donald Duck was actually the first voice I learned. I really? learned I, when, when I was four years old. I was going with my grandma to tennis practice, you know, like grandmas do. And there was this guy. He was just like. He just came up to me and started doing the Donald Duck voice, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to learn that. Oh, one day. I will learn it. That is my mission. <laughs> and, yeah, and I, I would like, I will accomplish this task. And eventually I learned it, and I was like, what other voices can I do? Like, have I, dev- have I found my superpower? I'm just going to do a calling? bunch of voices. Yeah, so I started just doing a bunch of random voices, and like, here I am. Can you say, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me? <laughs> yes, I can do that. Donald Duck is the graduate. Oh my god. You want to hear how far I can get in my Donald Duck? Yeah. Sorry. Was that it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just laughing. That's not bad. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, I don't think I could do. Shane? I don't think I can do any. I've never even tried. Uh, <laughs> I just become Apu. <laughs> no, well, that's the thing. Apu is the exact same voice. The same voice actor? It's the same. No, it's the same voice as Donald Duck. I, I just can't get the volume for like, Donald. How do you, what are you doing with your mouth? What are you... So I like talk out of the bottom corner of my mouth. It's like right down here. Back there. Back there. He's doing it. I, I'd have to like... He did it. Do you, you, whenever I learn a new impression, it takes... I'm not kidding. It takes like hours upon hours of days Practicing. of me just like... I find an impression that's close to it, and then I start like working my way around there. When um, I when I first discovered I could do Ash Ketchum, it's so good. It was like it is in really a script good. read because like it was definitely not even supposed to be read that way. It was supposed to be just Anthony reading as himself, but I don't even know if I could do it right now. Like I have to warm up. Like just do it. Whoa, 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 Pikachu! Oh no, Pikachu! Get out of my get! <laughs> it's really whoa, good. I apologize in advance for this. Unzips pants. Uh, Pikachu comes out. So can you pants. just say, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me? Whoa, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great. It's always good. That is, that is so good. Oh, so man. Good. Oh, God. I love it so much. I haven't seen that movie, so I don't know. Oh, The Graduate's incredible. And that line is the best. And do you think, have to do a voice thinking now. Of, so. Thinking of a shot... Uh, between Mrs. Robinson's legs of Donald Duck in the kitchen, just like. <laughs> like Good job. <laughs> what's what's an impersonation you can do that you could say that line? I mean, the, I don't do any like weird 
children like cartoon characters or anything. Oh, oh. Oh, Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, Donald. Oh, <laughs> you, you big man. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know what to do. <laughs> wow, dude. I mean, I, my, I think my best is still... Uh, Kronk or uh, oh yeah, or, Kronk. Or, that's a cartoon or Joe, character. Joe from Family Guy. Uh, well, it's yeah, Patrick Warburton. Um, I'm a big fan of his. He oh yeah, Bob's Burgers too. Oh yeah, yeah. I have I have worked on that one. I want to do all those characters from that show because I love Bob's Burgers. I love that actor's voice. Yeah. I could mm-hmm. listen to him forever. Yeah, he's he's very um, yeah he's very nasally and he's like here and it's just like Lynn. Okay, fine. I'll open up the <laughs> shop. I can work all day by myself. I don't need you. I'm waiting because it's hot in here. Next. Yeah, yeah I know. I, oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Courtney's just super upset with me. and Okay, she's waving me away. Great. <laughs> Great. But, but they're very similar. Like, the cadence is similar to... Because uh, with Gronk, he's kind of the same way of how they'll, like, pause. And they'll, uh, yeah, kind of be like this. And... Uh, and uh, so is Archer and Bob. They all take their time sometimes. Wow. Mm-hmm. So Love good. those. So good. Those are good advices. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I actually want to talk about this. There's no segue. I am actually just like want to talk about this. We only have 10 minutes left. How this are babies made? Thing. How are they made? Like, I don't have a penis and a vagina. How do I do it? Just kidding. That was really weird. Let's what? go into what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cosplay. Finnerty put in here, he was like, yeah, Wes and Courtney do, have done cosplay. Shane thinks it's weird. I don't even, uh, to preface, I don't like to even dress up for Halloween. Uh, as, as weird as it is, because I do sketch comedy, we get in costumes all the time for our work, I don't ever want to get into a costume unless mm-hmm. I have to. But you guys, well, especially you, you love you love cosplay. I, I really do. I, I just such I a don't blast. understand. But what have I, I understand. cosplayed? I once you, you, once sure. went to my first Comic Con. But I like, but I've always gotten the sense that you really like it, like you'd want to do it. And actually, Damien's the same way. A, a lot of my friends uh, and my other friend who's not on Smosh loves to do it and wants to do more of it. I I just don't understand what is it that you enjoy about it. I like um, just what looking is it? cool and like escapism. It's, kinda. it's well, it's not even that. It's it's a little bit of escapism, but it's also like you go to a convention dressed as a character, and people come up to you, and you get to make friends because you both love the same thing. That's cool, right? Like people are dressed up. You do photo shoots. I really love creating costumes and like making really cool photo sets. Mm-hmm. Like I really enjoy like becoming that character and making some really cool shots happen. And just like you know, a lot of my friends are photographers, and they're they really love the art style. So it's like. We, you know, it, when I do these a lot of these photo sets, it's you know if I reach out to a certain photographer, they're like, yeah, I really want to do that, or no, I don't. It's just like we we're friends that get together and try and make some really cool, uh, really cool content. It's just it's for fun, like you know, and I, I you know I I've managed to take it and do it as part of my career, which is amazing. It's been so much fun to do, but I just I do it because I love it. Like you know, I, the one of the first cosplay things I did was a Legend of Zelda like recreation of that like, was some crazy. of the stuff of Ocarina of Time. Um, and Sarah, uh, Adela cosplay, she's like the vision behind it. She made all of the, the link outfits, like, like, you know, go in and hand sewed and embroidered like these really cool triforces on the whole thing. It was like such a cool idea for a photo set. And I was such a huge legend of the Zelda fan. And like, I'd only done one costume before that. It was like ordered from China. It was like terrible Mm. devil may cry. And then I got into that and she was just like, by the way, this is my world. And from there on, I was just like, I'm, I'm in this. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. See, see, for me, because I'm a huge Zelda fan, I'm a big fan of a lot of stuff, but I guess I'm just very internal with it. Like, I'm just like, oh, I'm fascinated by that, but I don't, I'm not eager to, like, dress up as like, it or, like, or like express it. that. I guess that's the difference. Mm. I'm very, I'm very much an internal nerd. Yeah, I just love any excuse to wear something other than jeans and a t-shirt. Like, it's so cool to, like, because Zero Suit Samus Nobody wears that every day, but it's, like, so cool looking mm-hmm. and flattering. And, like, that's why I like premieres and stuff, because you get to just try in a different way. Mm-hmm. I guess, it's, like, cool. the fashion aspect is what I like more. And then the nerding out, too. I yeah. will say, when I went to Comic-Con and saw some of the costumes that people had made, I was really fascinated. Like, it's it, people put in Power so armor. much effort. Yeah. yeah, there was a giant, someone had a giant, they were Reinhardt from Overwatch. Mm-hmm. And it was this, like, eight-foot-tall just, I was like, how did you even do this? It was so cool. I was fascinated by it. I'm like, I get it. I, I do get that. 
Yeah, that's so. that's another portion of it that's really really cool for people is like they you know they're prop makers, they're costume designers, and they also yeah. love these characters, so they apply their skills to that. And it's just it it it's all these people from different backgrounds and different talents coming together because they love this one thing. They don't you know it's, you've got cosplayers who you know the, I have a friend she lives in New York and she's a, a lawyer like a very successful lawyer, but she loves doing cosplay, and it's like something just really cool for anyone from any different field who likes you know an anime or a video game to get together and like do this thing together when you would otherwise never meet. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's a really cool community of people. Yeah. Cool. Which is one of the reasons why I love it. Yeah, we have Lindsay who did the wardrobe for our trailer and she's done a lot of our wardrobe for Sketch and she she helped with the Mad Max shoot from... And did she also help over Wild West trailer as she's well? She's helped with a ton yeah. of stuff she's, over she, the years, And like, so. I'm literally wearing, I have her jumpsuit on right now that she uses for when she goes to Wasteland and stuff. But like, she she does, she, her Instagram's crazy. She creates mm-hmm. and sews together all of her, her mm-hmm. stuff. And I think that if I were to be in that cosplay world, other than like just buying stuff and wearing it for the sake of like pictures or whatever, like I definitely want to like make it myself. Because I feel like that's part of like, I don't know, part of the community as well as, like, the the creation process and stuff. But, yeah, I've n- I, I don't consider myself a cosplayer but because, like, we also just do it for work, like you said, right. Shane. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's just we have to wear the weirdest stuff, and then I'll just so happen to get to be Captain Marvel for one. I'm like, hell yeah. That, that is really cool. And another thing is, like, uh, I do LARP with Lindsay. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, she's part of the LARP group that I do, and it's really cool. I think you guys would probably really like that. I've been invited to go LARPing before, and I've, you, I've almost gone. You should you should come. I do this one called Twin Mask. It has, like, 300 people, but it's it's a cool mix of, like, being in costume and also doing acting and, like, cr- writing. So I wrote, like, 30 pages for my character's backstory. You're supposed to write a paragraph. Like, I just got super into it. Oh, cool. Uh, which is cool, but, you know, you just it, that's the thing you get to do. You get to write this I character. You I, get to come up with stuff. I think make I could the come up with something for that. I think I could do Look. Who would that, who would that person sound oh, who like? Who would this person sound like? Well, guess what he would sound like. He would sound like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You thought I was gonna go old wizard with I it, but uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Um, nope. See, that's 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 what, an old switch. Yeah. What's hilarious is there's a group of characters called Fey, and they're a race, and they're ha- like part animal. So you could literally be a part duck and do that that's voice. Whatever you want, Shane. Yeah, you can. No, yeah. I, I would realistically. I'd be the old wizard who lives in a giant walnut and gets rare ores to sell. I don't like to fight or anything, so I won't be much help to your team. But I can cheer from the side and say, hey, good job, sport. <laughs> Does the wizard slang dong? Uh, perhaps at one point in my life. Uh, but I've been alive since the beginning of time. <laughs> So somewhere around the Precambrian age, I was slinging dung, throwing around with some amoebas. Okay. The molecules that eventually evolved into fish, which evolved into primates, which evolved into to Homo sapiens, such as you. So what I'm saying is, I banged your great 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 times a thousand million grandmother. <laughs> wow, that was a. I just got burned. I am both Adam and Eve. Okay. I think the heat's getting into yeah, his brain. We're gonna oh, go. we it's go. really hot We gotta here. go. Guys, it's, we're, yeah, the AC's been off in 105 degree weather. You can imagine what we feel like right now. So uh, we're gonna get out, get going. Why don't you guys uh, check out the rest of the Smoshcast? So full video episodes released on Friday, but if you want to hear our audio, Uncensored comes out on Wednesday on any listening apps. Or go check out the Smosh Games, Smosh Pit, Smosh Channels for our Summer Games content. You're gonna enjoy it. You really will. Yes. Love you guys. Smosh.store to get these shirts too. Ooh. Which team are you voting Toxicity. for? Toxicity. Which Toxicity. Toxicity. If you're smart, you're gonna do Toxicity, but also you can buy both. No, yeah, listen, you if you want that both. clout, if you want that mushroom clout, you're gonna wanna get the pink tea. Look, just I'm saying. just saying, in person, this watermelon green is just incredible. Well, together we're watermelon. But mainly the green. Okay. The green's the most important part. All right. Love you guys so much. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.